Greetings to you, my CBC family. Welcome. It's Monday morning, a little post-game report, a little follow-up, if you will, to what we talked about yesterday in the sermon, uh, some thoughts in relation to this week, things we could be studying, uh, some encouragement uh, for you this week, uh, again, in terms of how we can continue to immerse ourselves in the book of Acts together, some things to be studying and following up from yesterday. If you've got something else you're studying and reading, great. Uh, continue with that. If you want to dive in deeper into this act series, here's some thoughts related to this week. Uh, loved our time yesterday. Uh, loved. I'm, I'm so loving this time. I, I mentioned to you a few weeks ago that once we got to Acts 20, uh, I had never preached on anything in the almost 24 years I've been here from Acts 21 through 28. Uh, and so I'm just loving uh, what's happening in Acts 21 to 28. This little mini series within the series of Acts called Defending the Faith, as we see Paul uh, continually uh, being falsely accused, liars coming against him, people threatening his life, um, and, and Paul constantly m moving up, it seems almost in every chapter, to higher and higher levels of authority, uh, platform of people that he was uh, having to make his defense before, uh, which which on one level from a worldly perspective stinks, right? Like like I we just want Paul to be released and you know to enjoy his life and live the good life, get a few rounds of golf in. Like, but from Paul's perspective, and as we'll see even this week coming up in chapter twenty five, Paul is appealing to. It's almost like he. It's almost like he has this awareness of the divine appointment that God is putting him in, even though it's a prison cell. Uh, and he keeps appealing to that, which then puts him before these audiences of people of greater and greater influence. I mean, we're going to see even this next week as well, again, where where Agrippa and, and Bernice come in full of this whole pomp, uh, kind of pompous pride, uh, all the things associated around them. Imagine a, a decent crowd uh, attracting in this, and here's Paul who gets to defend his faith uh, in front of them now, and from uh, before it was Felix, and it's going to be Festus this week. It's Agrippa, it's Bernice, it's Paul continues to have these divine appointments that sometimes we might look at and to see, wow, where's God in this? The challenges of, of being a Christian and the in our ways our faith is being tested. Yet here is Paul continuing to hold on to his faith, uh, defend his faith because he knew what he believed. He knew why he believed and he was communicating in a winsome manner, whatever the context of, of winsome might mean uh, for, for that particular situation. So I am finding it helpful. One, one uh, little thought here. I am finding it helpful for myself, especially over the last few chapters, uh, to read those at least once during the week as a whole. So starting uh, after Acts 20, from 21 to 28, to, to take a moment during your week and to read those again as a whole. We've only got a few weeks left in this series, and we're going to be done. We've been in Acts since the first week of June, and so we only got a few weeks left. But I'm finding it really helpful to keep reading uh, each week that one particular chapter we're on. So this week, read 24, and then at the end of the week, uh, start reading 25 in prep for this next Sunday. But I'm also finding it maybe mid midweek, sometime around there, very helpful to read through Acts 21 to 28 to see how the all of these details are, are coming together and where Paul was at, who Paul was speaking to, what his defense was, what is the uh, what uh, what were the core themes and messages? Obviously, resurrection uh, of, of Jesus that he kept coming back to. How he was defending himself, uh, how God was guiding the the intricate little details that Paul would 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 not have even been aware of of how God's hand uh, was upon him. One, one other thing uh, I want to share with you, and it it, uh, it only came out in second service. Just as as Ken was sharing communion in second service, just uh, a couple things happened in in my spirit where I just felt kind of a, a little little different direction how we how we end up going. But one of the things I shared uh, at the at the second service is a challenge. I want to challenge us all here now uh, from both services is, is from Acts 24, uh, verses 24 and 25. It says that after some days, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. He sent for Paul and he heard him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. 
and as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, go go away for the present. It, what hit me at, during communion was, as I was sitting there listening and just thinking, praying a little bit about the sermon for the, the second time coming up, was if if I were brought before a governor of somebody of this kind of level of authority who actually had the ability to help set me free, what would I say? Would I not be tempted in my flesh to say whatever that this person wants to hear? We're told a couple of verses later that Felix was hoping to get some money. I mean, could I bribe him? Could could I say just the right things to tickle his ears in such a way that he might find it in his heart to release me? And maybe justify it by saying, well, but then God will allow me to be free and I could do more ministry. Yet Paul didn't do that. And Paul, as we saw last week, even or the week before, uh, testified about the facts. And here he spoke to the governor. Uh, he spoke to somebody in a high position of authority about faith in Christ, about righteousness, about self-control, and about judgment. Now, we talked about that in both services, just a, just a slightly different way that, that it hit me about how uh, it is we speak to, to everybody uh, and, and, and would we be consistent in our message. With that, the challenge that I gave in second service, so I hope it's a repeat if you heard it in second service, and I want to share it with all if you were in first service. The challenge I gave was this. On a piece of paper, I did it for myself. These will be all backwards on your uh, uh, on the screen. Um, I wrote down, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 was something else I was studying last night. So, so really it, for this, it's, it looks like this. Uh, I, I, I encourage you, write down those bullet points, if you will, of faith in Christ, uh, righteousness, um, self-control, and, and judgment, and then circle them uh, and, and write divine appointment. I have a divine appointment. It might be a delay. It might be speaking before somebody that I would be tempted to not speak the, the truth of Scripture that I believe. If I had a divine appointment, what would I say? The core of what we ought to say, no matter what situation we're in, I think is found right here. I found this absolutely fascinating, convicting, and challenging for us. Faith in Christ, righteousness, self-control, and judgment. Now, the challenge with that is not just to have it and, well, one, to memorize it and to know, can know those words. The challenge is this. The homework assignment would be, what would what would you and I say if I had an opportunity and a divine appointment to talk to somebody, anybody, random stranger, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm before a governor, I'm, I'm before a person of high authority, uh, what would I testify about my faith in Jesus Christ? What would I... What would I share about righteousness? What would I say about self-control? What would I say about judgment? All from scripture. Uh, if somebody close to you, spouse, accountability partner, somebody, test each other in this, okay? What would you say about faith in Christ? Go. What would you say about, uh, what would you say about righteousness? Go. Uh, what would you say about self-control? Again, from scripture, what would we say? What would we say about judgment uh, from, from scripture? And not just like judging one another, uh, that's like the mantra of the world, don't judge, um, but in, in terms of the judgment to come. You know, here's Paul speaking essentially to a judge who who is saying at some point, uh, sir, governor, uh, do you realize that the chair, the chair in the table will be turned and you will stand before the judge, the king of all kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ? Uh, do you realize that? And so what would we say about those things? What, my answer that I gave a little bit in first service and, and in a more fuller way in second service, all was just a retelling of things that Paul wrote in Romans 3. Uh, and and in Romans uh, 7 and in Romans 8 and a little bit of Ephesians 2. So I, I would encourage you this week as well, a lot of homework this week, I guess, do this, test yourself in this, have somebody else quiz you in this, uh, read, obviously, Romans 24, immerse every day in it, read Romans, tw or <laughs> Romans, <laughs> Acts 24, Acts 24 and immerse yourself in it every day. I'm nine minutes in. This is the longest update I've given. I'm not going to edit this and redo. I just, these are all off the cuff. Um, so correction, Acts 24 was what we're reading this week. Acts 25, then in prep for Sunday. Again, I would encourage you read all of from Acts 21 to 28, just to see how that's all coming together and playing out. Uh, when I'm done with this, I'm, I'm going to actually do it right now as, as I'm preparing in Acts 25 and just want to see how all those details come together. And then as well, I would encourage you to develop an answer. Um, read Romans 3 to 8. 
all of Romans is is a beautiful way for us to really immerse ourselves in in a defense of the faith and from scripture to memorize sections of that uh, that that's a great section of scripture for that Ephesians 2 Ephesians 1 2 and 3 actually I know this is a lot and I'm adding more and more but just pick and choose do something within this and really start diving into this and um, lastly, as I said in second service, you know, all month, this month we're in, our creed reading is the Heidelberg Catechism question number one. That is an excellent uh, defense of the faith for what it is that brings us comfort in life and death, in, 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 in this life and in our death. What, what is it that brings us comfort? Uh, and so Google, read, grab a hold of a copy of the Heidelberg Catechism question number one. So that's everything. Uh, boy, that's a lot. Uh, again, we're winding down on the Acts series. I am absolutely loving this series. I'm absolutely loving this uh, section of, of the book of Acts that I haven't seen. I hope you are as well. Uh, I want to close out with just, I want to pray um, for you. Uh, maybe you'll see this today. Maybe you'll see it this week. Maybe you'll see it years from now. But I want to offer, and, and again, this is, if somebody else comes along this, great, wonderful. Somebody else comes along, it, criticize, whatever, great, wonderful. Um, my point in these is I want to offer something uh, to my church. I, I'm called the shepherd, this this church here at, at CBC. If you happen to happen upon along this, welcome, hello. I would love to pray for you as well. I hope these can minister to you and really challenge you to get into the Word of God as well. But my prayer and focus is for CBC, uh, to, to shepherd uh, you uh, as, as, my, as my flock, my family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So let me pray uh, for you. Heavenly Father, I am... I am lifting up today uh, my my family, uh, my my uh, my my flock that you have have given to me here at CBC. Father, I I pray for them today. I've I've been in communication with a handful even uh, as of yesterday and yesterday evening and this morning. There are many things that are happening and going on in in the lives of so many people uh, here with just in our flock. Father, I pray that you that you guide them today, this week. Father, whenever they may come across this video, Father, I pray that you would that you would bring your healing presence over them. I pray, Father, that their eyes would be lifted to you in the midst of delays that life will bring, that we all together might see them as a divine appointment where you have placed us for a specific purpose and reason, and that wherever that is, that we are never outside of your will or your plans for us. Father, lift our eyes to you. Father, provide for, bless, strengthen, enrich in our lives by your Holy Spirit and the Word of God that you've given to us. Father, I pray lastly for our church that, that through this series and through what's still yet to come for us, that you would you would grow within us such a hunger, such a desire to know your Word, to study your Word, to gather together, to be immersed in the Word of God and led and fed by your Holy Spirit in this Word uh, that you have given to us. Father, Create that hunger, that desire in our lives as a body of believers here at Community Bible Church so that the only natural result would be that we would go out into the communities wherever you take us to be the hands and feet of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. To be able to minister to people, to be able to listen, to be able to speak into the lives and the situations of people around us that we will come across. All by your being led by your righteous right hand. Father, thank you for these things, your grace, your mercy, your love, and your faithfulness to us. Thank you for your faithfulness to us as a church and guide us and equip us for life and in living so that you would be glorified and honored in all that we say and do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Look forward to the study we have this week, and I cannot wait to see you Sunday. And, um, and, uh, man, uh, I can't think what I want to say on it, but to study, to worship, to pray, and to fellowship together with you as a body of believers, it's, uh, it is by far the highlight of my week. So look forward to it. God bless you guys.